Hello, Tim from Fairplay now on the 4th of May 2022. And there is more and more and more evidence now that the whole lurgy nonsense continues to collapse. The first sign that I've seen personally is I had to go to London on the train today to do something, uh, meet up with someone. And so that is basically the second time in a week that I've been on the trains and everything around London. Uh, obviously the other time was the London shopping trip on Saturday. And I'm pleased to tell you that uh, muzzleage is down to probably only about 10% of people now, maybe 15%. They really are starting to stand out um, because almost no one is wearing them at all. Um, so that is a very, very good sign. And the people who do muzzle up tend to be sort of uh, the very elderly, which I suppose if anyone's got any justification to doing so, uh, maybe it's them, especially if they've been so kind of uh, brainwashed by the powers that shouldn't be and the mainstream misleader um, to sort of think they, you know, they're going to drop down dead as soon as they take their muzzles off. Um, so that would explain why they are sort of uh, wearing them, I suppose. A uh, little bit uh, of a shame, really, that they've got to spend their last few years in such a state of fear. But, uh, uh, you know, we know who to blame on that. Uh, the government, of course. Uh, well, talking of governments and uh, prime ministers... I see that it is, uh, uh, well, I suppose I'm reminded of the fact that it's the 25th anniversary of Tony Blair first becoming Prime Minister at the start of May in 1997. Uh, hands up if you're going to be celebrating that uh, this week. What, none of you? Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> I can't blame you. Uh, it was, he was... Probably the worst prime minister we've ever had, I would say. Um, and there's plenty of contenders for that spot, isn't there? With the current one giving him a, a very big run for his money, of course. Uh, but yeah, getting back on track with this uh, whole narrative collapse scene. Um, and I'm looking here at a little bit of news. And it says that the Indian Supreme Court rules... Uh, sort of big V mandates unlawful as courts around the world push back against uh, uh, state overreach. And the Indian High Court is just the latest to say that these ridiculous mandates, these evil mandates, are unlawful. Uh, of course, we've had uh, the sort of either the high courts or very senior courts in. Um, New Zealand, I think Ontario as well, uh, Austria, which is why Austria were the Austrian government are forced to go back on uh, their big V mandate. Um, it was literally only about a month after it came into force that they had to uh, repeal it, probably because um, of the decision that their High Court made. And another recent one was. Um, uh, the one in Sicily, a court in Sicily, has also um, ruled that uh, this government overreach is unlawful. Not sure if that relates to uh, big V's or lockdown, but uh, uh, there was a decision there as well. So it is beginning to spread, I reckon, and you know it is a good sign because it means that in future governments won't be quite as ready to impose these mandates, lockdowns and all the rest of it. Um, there is going to be a lot more flack if they ever try and do that again. And also another bit of news here that I'll just finish on. Um, there's a gym owner who was facing a £10,000 
uh, lockdown fine for breaking the second lockdown, November 2020. And he's actually a gym owner in St. Neots. Um, I know St. Neots quite well because that's where my brother lives. So if you're from around that way, hello. And um, I've got to say, uh, I do particularly like that uh, calf in the uh, market square, you know, kind of to the left side of the market square as you look towards the market square from the street there. Um, I really sort of like that for a bit of breakfast. And um, I think it's uh, I think it's called the Coach House, really nice pub that I kind of like as well there. Uh, but anyway, that's Sydney it's for you. And this gym owner from Sydney it's has had a um, a fine sort of case collapsed so he is in the clear and it just shows you that if you do show a bit of defiance against this government overreach uh, you will win uh, in the long run and the headline here I think I said a minute ago the a lawyer says hundreds more will follow so it looks like many many hundreds of these uh, ridiculous fines are going to be thrown out so that is a really really good sign and I just love seeing this kind of pushback against uh, um, this horrible government tyranny and I kind of um, don't want to speak too soon um, it does feel like we are starting to turn a corner here um, albeit going back to what I was saying initially about uh, the muzzles, um, I've got a horrible feeling that uh, yeah, the government's only got to say boo and everybody will be like that again, as quick as you like. But I think that uh, the government will be thinking twice because of all these court cases and collapsed fines and all the other pushback they will have to very much think again before they uh, dare to bring back any kind of um, lockdown, any kind of uh, big V mandates or pretty much any other sort of lurgy um, restrictions. So it's all at the moment going in the right direction, I feel. Um, could be wrong I and mean, it could be sort of come the autumn uh, will be kind of in trouble again but somehow I don't think so I think these governments are sort of uh, running scared now of kind of what's happening and long may it continue so I'll leave it there for today I'll back tomorrow of course Tim from Fairplay now thanks for watching